Welcome. This is our first live stream from Cuddle, and I'm Toby. And I'm Ryan. And um, we're co-founders of Cuddle, and we've been working on this design tool for a bit of time. And um, yeah, our first live stream, we're excited to try it out. Hopefully, if it all goes well, this can be a regular occurring live stream. Uh, I think what we'll do is we're planning on sort of highlighting what's new as of this week. And if you all have any questions, please leave questions in the chat and we'll address questions as we see them. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I hope, I hope there are some questions. Um, and yeah, we've got a couple things to show. Um, so I think first we're going to just start with um, some projects we've been seeing from the community. Uh, so for example, this was sort of cool. I saw this on Twitter. Um, this is at a school. Um, somebody made a, um, a LED box project and it's starting from the closed box template. And then it looks like um, he added a hole for a button and some really awesome Arduino and LED programming for making a cool light project <laughs> with lots of great modes. Yeah, it's a cool idea to make one of the, can you um, go back a little bit so we can see the, the fronts of it? So they made one panel of the box out of like a frosted acrylic and then the rest of it out of wood. So then you get this, that nice diffused LED look. Yeah, it's all about diffusing the LEDs, in my opinion. Some people like the bare LEDs uh -huh. in your eyes, which is also cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, they have some. They have some of those uh, in the in the BART station. When I was like, they the light fixtures are like. Some of these bare LEDs. Did, but were the modes as good as these modes? No, they were not. Uh -huh. They're definitely not. So they need some, uh, some press fit boxes. <laughs> this is awesome. So on Discord, uh, Eric Steele has been sharing his uh, progress with, uh, I think it's called Make Vember, which is this like november challenge where every day you have a prompt and you have to create something with a laser cutter about that prompt and uh he's been posting these in the discord chat and i've been really pumped to see what he makes i think my favorite so far is this one which is just it just came out like so pretty basically mm -hmm. it's a earring stand so you can put the earrings in there and then it also has this uh, area that you can put other jewelry and this is a living hinge a living hinge the idea is that you cut wood sort of in a bunch of lines sort of like like you see here and then because of that you can actually bend the wood and uh, create these curves and the whole thing is parametric and that you could make this bigger oh, wow. or change the height of it or change the material thickness. So awesome job, Eric. Can we check out, can we, can you uh, edit that one? I just want to see how uh, he used the images in here. Um, well, I think this one might be an a, imported SVG or something. Is it or, SVG? or is that an image? It looks like an image to me. Otherwise, it's a very detailed uh -huh. uh, SVG. So, oh, cool. Maybe it is. Hmm. There it is. Oh, there it is. Image. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So this is using the new um, image feature in Cuddle, which I'm so glad we've we were able to ship uh, a couple weeks ago or something so this is um this lets you put 
um, upload like PNGs or JPEG images, and then on a laser cutter, you can then engrave those using, um, you know, raster engraving. So the laser is going back and forth, and uh, and then you end up with I'll show the image again mm -hmm. uh, that kind of a look, uh, which is cool. Um, yeah, this is this really is a cool this is a really good project. Um, it's using a lot of cool features like uh, the living hinge is created with a linear repeat uh, and using a bunch of components. Uh, yeah, this is like using all the, the things that we thought would be good for <laughs> laser cutting design. So it's really cool to see people taking advantage of these features. All right, so that's that's what we've got for community projects this week. Um, new features in Cuddle are, um, so first of all, uh, the Explore page, which is this page, uh, before it used to show every single publicly shared project. Um, and this was getting a little bit unmanageable, so we did a little update where it defaults to just showing projects that have photos that have been uploaded. And um, can I show how to upload a photo? Or? Uh, yeah, go, go for it. Um, so I'm on, looks like I'm on Ryan's yeah. account. Oh, that's cute. You made <laughs> Yeah, so I made the, the little, um, <laughs> the, the mask for our... <laughs> For our, for our image, where, and, where we yeah, are, the, the bubble that we're in, <laughs> uh, in cuddle. <laughs> um, oh, you know, so I'm gonna go to this bubble that you made, mm -hmm. and then in the README, you haven't mm -hmm. made a README <laughs> about your project. So in the README, you can you can write notes about your project. Um, if you're gonna be sharing it, you can like share tips for assembly, um, like what the parameters do, things like that. But then the other cool thing is you can include um, images. So Maybe I'm just gonna- Screenshot the- That's what I was thinking. Okay. Oh, I, my, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to uh, screenshot oh, because just, we haven't set up. Uh, oh, so you, you can just yeah, right click. So, okay, yeah. So if I right click on the, so we're using OBS here and then I think we just, can just Is it copy or screenshot, screenshot preview. There we go. Okay, then okay. should be able to just paste now. Oh, uh, that, that didn't work. Okay. Okay. Do um, you want to just upload some image from the yeah, right. computer? Yeah. How about just Command Shift Four, and then I'll just do this. Okay. And then so I so I took a screenshot, and now I'm gonna paste into the README. So. All right. So now, now. Um, yeah, so when, once you have an image in your README, then it will automatically show up um, in um, sort of on this card for when you're looking at your projects, which is great. And then if you were to share this project, then also it would uh, show up on the Explore page and also on your profile page. So like this is uh, Eric Steele's profile page and then the one, the projects that he's uploaded a photo show up, the photo shows up. So we're trying to encourage people to upload more, more photos. Um, I mean, certainly if you're, if you make the thing, take a photo, put it in there, you'll be happy that you have documentation of your project. That is something that I know from doing art school. <laughs> you want documentation of your projects. Huh. Um, there are a couple more features that um, that shipped this week. Um, one of them is that um, pixels. You like to keep your thing. Oh pixels. well, I was just doing that project. <laughs> oh right, that makes the, sense. The, uh, All right, so mask. so say that you are um, you have a project in inches, which is that's that's my default personally. I know other people like millimeters and such. And if you like millimeters, or say you're making a project in inches, but you have a 
hole that you know needs to be exactly five millimeters, you can now type it in in here. Mm -hmm. it's and like it, and like, it does it. Like metric, uh, metric screw sizes or something. Yeah. It's really useful for that. Um, and so previously we had added it to the parameters so you could type it sort of in here, but the new feature is that you can also type it in these uh, uh, these canvas dimension things. Mm. You still can type it into the per into the parameters, and that might be a better way to do it in some cases. Like for example, if you're making a component that is a um, that's a screw hole size or something like that, you might want to actually type it in, into the parameter. But this is is nice for just quick. Um, if you just quickly want to like type in a dimension and, and um, so like if I wanted to do that, I would go here and I would instead of this, I would say like five millimeters and then uh, and then I actually get the um, the unit selector here. Cool. Um, so if there are any questions, definitely leave them in the chat, but I don't see any questions so far. So we'll continue. Um, so the other things we wanted to share in this live stream are some projects that we've been making, but sort of with the mind towards like, we want to be um, making more cuddle templates to add to the so like right now, we have this, uh, you know, templates area, and we want to like really fill this out with more things. So the first one that I was going to show is uh, these name tags. So um, these are, you know, for um, you can pin them to your. <laughs> to yourself, and then people will know who you are. No, we should have, um, we should have worn some. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this is sort of a demo of the uh, new text within box feature, which is currently a beta modifier, but I think it's going to be out of beta probably next week or so. Um, but anyway, so these, these name tags, um, this sort of comes from, um, we used to be involved with this nonprofit and um, there are a bunch of volunteers and we would have events. And so we made these name tags for all of the volunteers. And often when you're making name tags, you need to make like 30 of them or a hundred of them. And so having a parametric version where you can type in um, a name and then get the download, download SVG and get it, you know, immediately is a quick way of making 30 of these things. And then also specifically with name tag kinds of things, if somebody has a really long name and it's too long to fit on whatever your default size for the name tag is, this template will automatically resize the name down. So if you were doing this, you know, with a tool that wasn't like Cuddle, then you would need to, you type out the name, you'd be like, oh man, it's too big. So then you'd have to change the font size, recenter it, all that. Um, but with this, you can, uh, the tool does it for you. And, um, this is using the new, um, this is using a new feature where you can make a rectangle and then do this text within box. So I'm just going to demo that. So the idea is if you, you bring out a rectangle and say it's that big, and then you do modify text within box. Now you'll get text that you can type whatever you want into, and it will automatically be fit exactly into the box. 
that you put it in. So if I resize the box, the text will always be sort of the size that it should be. Uh, you can rotate the box. And um, then with this template, I thought I would try to make it, um, I guess, rather than like having a bunch of parameters about like the size of the name tag and stuff, I thought I would make it like a, a much simpler template that just had the name and the font. And then if you want to customize it, then you can, you would go to edit and cuddle and then like change it. So like maybe I want my name tags to be longer so I could, you know, resize that and resize the, um, the box that it's in, or maybe I want to add a logo or something. So, uh, I'll just pretend that <laughs> there's mm -hmm. a logo of an elephant and it's going to be over here. And then I want there to be, uh, text here and maybe I want the text to be aligned to the left and I'll uh, push it over a little bit and then it would end here let's say and maybe this is the name tag and then so now I've made it so now if I type in another name or like Oh, oops, that's still not long. I'm trying to <laughs> type a really long name. Um, so if you type in a long name, it would it would automatically do the resizing thing. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm planning on making you know a YouTube video sort of showing like what I just showed. And then you also have this in your README. So if you share this project with somebody else, it's it's gonna already have your new right. design mm -hmm. um, already in there. So and then people can type in whatever their long, long name <laughs> Con is. Constantine is your yeah. <laughs> demo name. Um, BL, uh, <laughs> Methus Methuselah. What's that like Hawaiian fish? That's like the official oh. Hawaiian fish. Uh, I, I definitely would not be able to spell it, but it's, it's a long name. Um, yeah, so that's the name tag project and yeah this is how they come out um <clears throat> i cut these demo ones out of the um glowforge recently released a uh light plywood which i kind of dig it it's um it cuts really fast and it's lighter i like it um all this stuff is cut out of that by the way um, you want to show this puzzle thing you're working on? Yeah, okay. Okay. So, in the theme of, um... Uh, my ways. webcam <laughs> is always um, doing that. Yeah, in the theme of having more, uh, more example projects or more templates, um, so I've been working on this one, um, which is a puzzle generator. Yeah. Um, so I'll go to the web browser. So. This uh, puzzle generator, so it allows you to make a puzzle with any image that you want. So you can you can go in here, choose an image, um, and uh, I won't pick a different one right now. But um, and you can also change the size. Um, this is sort of a work in progress. So I think in in the final version, you'll be able to select probably uh, what size you want the puzzle pieces to be, and maybe like have um, some more features around like. Um, Maybe you want it to be uh, maybe the style of, of puzzle connector or something like that. Um, but um, yeah, so this is, um, I can show like what the, so like this is, uh, we just cut these out today. Um, and it's just <laughs> your sort of traditional kind of puzzle. Um, traditional it's actually, except that it's wood, which is like a different right. deal, which is nice. Um, and uh, so this was actually so uh, it was actually kind of surprising. So like um, the so the image um, we've been 
looking at uh, some of the puzzles that um, uh, that nervous system has been producing and and they they have a very fancy UV printer and they they print directly onto the wood and then they cut it out and so we were trying to replicate something like that and um, I think the way that we did it is is just to to print it out on paper and then glue the paper to the wood and then put like a masking tape layer over the paper um, yeah over the print right yeah and I, then... I can explain so Monique mm -hmm. and I did this um, an hour ago so like yeah uh, we had we made this one just as like a demo to see it and this is also that uh, light maple plywood and yeah then we wanted to try doing the an image so i'm sure we're we'll definitely make like a youtube video about this because i feel like this came out so good especially we had no idea if it would come out good at all uh it, it was our first try so yeah it's um we essentially cut out a square of this stuff took the masking off I sanded it a bit because I was afraid that it wouldn't stick to the finish. Um, I don't know if that's necessary mm -hmm. or not. And then we used a spray adhesive and put this, which is the, the, the image is just printed on a color printer. Um, and so we sprayed, used the spray adhesive to put the, the paper onto the wood and then covered that in masking tape, um, put it back in the Glowforge, and then cut this out. Um, I think that's, that's essentially the whole process. And it just came out so, so well. I had yeah. no idea that it would come out this well. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, surprisingly clean. Yeah. And then the back is like this nice, uh, what kind of paper did you use for the image, Federico asks. It was, it's like slightly better than like your like economy paper I, I think it looks like maybe 32 or 24 pound uh premium paper or something um but we can try like different things but yeah it's not not especially fancy um and i don't know if we'd want to yeah i don't know it feels pretty good yeah i think we'll we'll, we'll experiment with with different things and and you know, for whenever we make this YouTube video, uh, but just, yeah, just like, like decent paper, like mm -hmm. slightly better than like your, like cheapest paper. Yeah. It might be cool to experiment with like a glossy photo mm -hmm. paper or something, mm -hmm. or maybe like a, th maybe th slightly, well, I'd actually, no, maybe, maybe thicker stock wouldn't be better. Maybe thin is good because the wood is already, already going to make it Heavy structural. Thickness, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, a promising, promising experiment. Um, so I can show a little bit. I wanted to show a, sort of, I guess, how this is constructed a little bit. Um, uh, Cause it ended up being pretty simple. Um, I guess simple, um, uh, simpler than I was expecting it to be. So, um, so the way that this is, is put together is um, it's basically just two um, tile repeated um, edge segments. So we have the, the vertical edges, which are repeated um, sort of uh, uh, basically just tiled every inch. So, so you have them going like, um, you know, uh, like every inch to, to the right and every inch to, uh, down. Um, and then um, uh, and then we have the, the horizontal edges and those are just repeated in the same in the same way, but they're they're just ro they're, they're they're rotated. So I made this edge this edge component, which is just straight segments, and it has two handles on it. So you can like you can uh, you can move the edge around, um, and then basically the um, so we have like some some options so you can have a you can make it a right edge or a, or a left edge um, and then you have the two points um, and then these uh, basically are um, so uh, there's a little bit of calculation going on here that um, that just uh, sort of drives these these anchor positions so it's a little bit like a little bit fancy in here 
Um, but so, like, so basically, the idea is that they're they're just these these four or one two three four five mm -hmm. six points. Yeah, these ones. Those are, ones are fixed. The ones mm -hmm. on either end. Yes, yeah, so these are these okay. are just point one and point two. And then these ones in between are driven by. So there's some. So there some are, parameters in there. Can you can you like scrub these parameters yeah, so we can see yeah. like what. So the what? center controls okay. uh -huh. where it is left and right, mm -hmm. uh, and then the bulge controls like how big the the sort of the puzzle the, thing yeah, is. Yeah, the puzzle bulge is, <laughs> um, and then you have the scale x, which is like how sort of wide the puzzle the puzzle puzzle mm -hmm. uh, thing is, and then the scale uh, scale y is like how how big is it how big it is in that dimension. Cool, um, and so. Those are these are all fixed in this component, mm -hmm. but then, in when you're actually using them, you're putting in like random values mm -hmm. for those values. Yeah. yeah. So then, uh, so then each one has a random, basically a, like a random left or right, and a, you know random value for the for for each one of those other parameters. And I think we have a couple. So. Oh, these Let's are see. these are uh, what these are comments about the puzzle. Uh -huh. uh, sorry, about the how the how the puzzle was made. So uh, Brian Wenty says um, that he found eight and a half by eleven labels and attached them to chipboard, then cut it all in one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is also cut all in all in one. Um, it's not. I we didn't we didn't cut it and then glue it and then cut it again. Um, we we attached the um the photo masked it and then cut it in one go mm -hmm. um yeah so then so then basically like uh so then those are so then those are merged and the the sort of magic of this of this project is that you know those th those become merged and then they're one sort of um so all these paths get connected together um, and then I have this fancy B spline modifier that basically sort of smooths out that whole line. So um, I can describe a little bit like what a B spline is. And um, so, yeah. so you have your, your, your normal sort of like Bezier curve. This is uh, basically what all paths are made up of in, in Cuddle. So you have your handles. Um, and, and then that defines some path. So you can actually think of this as, um, instead of thinking about it as handles, you can think of it as basically you have a, um, you know, you have some path and, uh, and these, so, so this segment is like one, so this would be the anchor point. This would be the handle. Uh, this anchor would be another handle. And then this would be the, the anchor point. So in a similar way, you can kind of, so if I, if I put these at those points, you can see what I'm talking about. So, um, so they kind of, it kind of uh, maps that way. So then what, what B-spline does um, is that it basically tries to generalize this idea of having a, 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 of having a poly, a, a sort of polygonal, like a straight line, like a polyline and uh, smoothing it out um, so where where like a normal Bezier curve, you only have uh, you only have four points with a B spline, you can actually have as many points as you want. Um, so this is an example where I have a, a polyline with a bunch of points. I can go in here and use the pen tool, and if I turn off the uh, if I turn off the um, the grid, so I can use the pen tool and I can basically draw like as many points as they want, and it's all smoothed. Um, and the other cool thing about it is that even though I drew this this whole new section, every new point only affects, uh, it doesn't sort of change the whole line, so it only affects like the, um, the, the, the very end close to where you're drawing. Um, and so, B-spline are kind of like a more like mathy concept that I won't go, go into. And 
actually the the way that the modifier that I that I wrote in here is implemented it is, isn't a real B spline. It's sort of um, kind of a fake B spline um, that's a little an bit approximation. Easy. Yeah, it's a, okay. it, it's it's an approximation. So it's sort of um, so the idea is so so what I did here was I I made a B spline with um, uh, so I had a, a path with with uh, four points, I applied the B-spline modifier, and then I basically um, I duplicated that, and then I, I used convert to paths. So, uh, you know, convert to paths will uh, sort of um, remove any modifiers and leave the geometry that, uh, that you have. So convert to paths here. Um, and then, so on this, you can kind of see what's happening with this. So basically like um, the way that this works is that for every segment you um, take uh, like you split it into into four points and you split what, it in thirds. Yeah, in thirds. Like. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, exactly. So the so the first the first uh, point becomes the the anchor point. So the second point becomes the handle um, for the first anchor point. Then the third point becomes the handle for the in, the ingoing handle for the second anchor point, and then basically you continue that onto the, the next segment, um, and you place the hand the, the the anchor point for the first segment um, in between the handles of the um, or it, like in between the um, the sort of uh, the point. Uh, <laughs> In, like in between this point and 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 this point. So so you figure out where the these handles are first. Is, is that right? Like um yeah, like all it. these unfilled ones. These are the handles. You figure out where those are using this dividing the thing up into thirds. Mm -hmm. And then these in between points are like sort of. Then you have to figure out the in between point is in between handles. Yeah, it's in between the handles, and you want it to be. The midpoint between the handles, be okay. because um, because then that that keeps the uh, the curve tangent at that point. So if I didn't have it at that point, um, and the you know uh, then the 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 curve would sort of uh, would kind of become um, whoops uh, so whoops uh, so the curve would would kind of become sort of broken you would you, you would have oh, a, yeah, a discontinuity right, right. there so it, yeah of course it um, has to be yeah you want it smooth mm -hmm. you don't want to have those kinks in it yeah so yeah, um but yeah so i have this this uh this project is actually on my uh my projects here i think it's uh oh, you shared it you did? yeah i did share it so i think it's in explore somewhere <laughs> somewhere you down didn't, here you didn't add a photo Oh yeah, I'd, all right. So I need to add a photo. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll add a photo so you can find it. But the, but the 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 gist of it is basically that you can use this, and if you have something uh, like this uh, this puzzle generator where you just want to have a bunch of points and then have a smooth line um, uh, coming out of it, then this is a really good way to do it. Uh, and you know, I brought this over from other tools because I really like just working with um, smooth, like I like, you know, to always have a smooth line and it, it makes it really easy to kind of, to make this these, these kind of shapes. Um, so this is coming from like, when you were uh, making art with code or something and that's where you, this, where you discovered this B-spline thing, which is, uh, yeah, I so guess some sort of algorithm in sort of computer graphics or manufacturing. Yeah, so so I think the the first place that I encountered this was in three D graphics and okay. in like uh, programs like Maya and like mm -hmm. um, they they have a this this uh, sort of uh, way of modeling called NURBS, which not a lot of people use anymore. Um, and uh, and then in tools like Rhino, they have they have B splines, which are um, kind of like they're they're much more featured and and um, but. Uh, but basically, this is a simpler version for for Cuddle. Um. Well, I think it's really cool that you're able to just put in that that bit of code. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's dense, but it's 
Yes. It's also can be seen in a single page, which I like. Um, neat. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, modifiers are so, uh, somewhat advanced fe advanced feature in Cuddle, or, or custom modifiers, rather, like they're all the, the built-in modifiers in the modify menu, but you can make a new modifier, and then they come down here, and then you can type in some JavaScript code, and we have a um, reference on how to do that and some tutorials um, and then but then you can also copy them so like you could you know I'm not going to write this B spline thing because Ryan already wrote it so I'm going to go to his puzzle generator thing and then I'm going to click on that to select the modifier and then I'll hit command C to copy it and then I'll just paste it onto my own shape in my own project and then um, I think something that we want to do with Cuddle is like eventually create a community and a corpus of like custom modifiers that people have made that are shared and everyone can take advantage of. Um, so thanks for making this and thanks for teaching us about beast lines. I did not know. <laughs> I had heard of beast lines before, just the word, but I didn't know sort of what, what they did, how they worked. Mm -hmm. Um, well, yeah, so now like everyone can 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 use this. Um, well, once I add a photo to my B-Spline project. Um. <laughs> well, yeah, you can see it in the all projects. Yeah. And also, um, you know, there's everyone has their like profile page too. Um, so like, uh, I'll just go to yours, but mm -hmm. um, people have their profile pages that, that show all their public projects. Oh, there it is, B-Spline. Oh, globs, that's another good one. We, yeah, we need to, um, it's great. I, like something that I think that's been happening with Cuddle is that it like allows us to experiment because we have the custom modifiers. And so we have a bunch of really interesting, uh, you know, uh, shapes, I guess. Mm -hmm. Interesting shapes that, that Ryan's been making um, using his, depth of graphics and coding uh, knowledge and experience. And as we sort of get them perfected, then I want to be able to like make them built-ins that um, people can just bring into their project really easily and know, know that they work well and have like tutorials on how to use them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's just like so much ahead of us is the, um, uh, is what it so comes down to. Vestron asks, are the B splines performant for big geometries? Does it generate a ton of points on the curve uh, that have to be managed? So um, they should be basically, um, so for each one of these, so if I, you know, if I take this, this path and I, and I duplicate it, so so I hold option and uh, just drag it to another location. And then I can right click it and go convert to paths. So you can see then what the, the geometry that, that results out of this modifier is. And um, basically it's kind of like, so for every, every straight segment there, you have just one, um, one, uh, one curved segment here. So it's really actually not that, much more geometry. Actually, it's the same amount of geometry in terms of like, uh, what number what, of like, anchor points total or something. It's like yeah, it should about be the, the same, same or like one off or something. I think it's actually the same number of anchor points. So okay, uh, so each one of these anchor points just becomes a smooth anchor point. Mm -hmm. um, so it should be basically the same. Um, yeah. Thanks for the question. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think we've already gone beyond time on um, what I was expecting. I was thinking these would be about half an hour. So I want to close it up. Uh, thank you all for, for watching. Uh, mm -hmm. And we'll have this recorded. And I think we'll probably try to do this again next week. Probably mm -hmm. the same time. Um, yeah, let us know if you have opinions on timing or any of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, uh, Brian Wente has another question. 
When you export a B spline, do you need to convert it to a path? No, so that will happen automatically. So you'll just get the, so when you export it, um, I'll go back to our, uh, so when you export the path, uh, this is what you'll get, this, this um, sort of uh, converted to paths version. Yeah, and in general, whenever you export anything from Cuddle as an SVG, it just comes as like the simplest possible SVG because we want any cutter to be able to like work with it. So like you don't have to, for example, in other programs, you have to like convert your text, right? Because like, um, say Illustrator or Inkscape, by default, they're gonna make an SVG that has like a text element in it. And then your cutter, maybe it doesn't have that font that you're using. And so it doesn't know how to work with the text. So in Cuddle, we've made it so that whenever you export an SVG, it sort of like makes the like you could say the dumbest version, like we want the lowest common denominator, right? So that any cutter should be able to work with it. Because mm -hmm. the whole point with exporting is like you want to cut the thing. So yeah. that's, mm -hmm. that's how it works. So you never need to convert things to a path. You only need to convert something to a path if you want to like work with it as a path. So mm -hmm. within Cuddle. Within Cuddle, right. Mm -hmm. So like like you if could, for example mm -hmm. here I wanted to like, oh, like I want to, you know, I want to bend some of these segments and and you know, ch just change the way that this looks and you know, mm -hmm. I can't do that with the modifier applied, but now that I've converted it to paths, I have access to all of that. Right. If you want to edit it, you know, the details of the the anchor points mm -hmm. and all that. All right. That's a good, mm -hmm. that's a good live stream. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.